Hello my friends, welcome to my energy economist channel. We're gonna start today by knowing the magnetic survey in finding oil and gas. So stay with me. The magnetic method detects changes in the Earth's magnetic field caused by variations in the magnetic properties of rocks. In particular, basement and igneous rocks are relatively highly magnetic. If they are located close to the surface, they give rise to anomalies with a short wavelength and high amplitude. The method is airborne, plane or satellite which permits rapid serving and mapping with good aerial coverage. Like the gravity technique, this survey is often employed at the beginning of an exploration venture. Magnetic methods are based upon measuring the magnetic effects produced by varying concentrations of ferromagnetic minerals such as magnetite. And instruments used for magnetic prospecting vary from the simple mining canvas used in the 17th century to sensitive airborne magnetic units permitting intensity variations to be measured with an accuracy greater than 1 equal 10,000 parts of the Earth's field. The magnetometer is a specially designed magnetic canvas and detects minute differences in the magnetic properties of rock formations, thus helping to find structures that might contain oil such as the layers of sedimentary rock that may lie on top of the much denser igneous or basement rock. The data give clues to places that might conceal anticlines or other oil favorable structure. Of even more value is the determination of the approximate total thickness of the sedimentary rock, which can save unwarranted expenditure later or more costly geophysics or even the drilling of a well, when the sediment may not contain sufficient oil to warrant further investigation. Most magnetometer surveys used now are performed by the use of aircraft, which permits large-scale surveys to be made rapidly and surveys over regions that may be otherwise inaccessible. One of the most widely used magnetic instruments is the Schmidt Vertical Magnetometer. It consists of a pair of blade magnets balanced horizontally on a quartz knife edge. The balance is oriented at right angles to the magnetic meridian. The deflection from the horizontal is observed, giving the variation in magnetic vertical intensity with gravity. The torsion fiber magnetometer is also a vertical component instrument but has an operating range greater than the Schmidt instrument. It also has an advantage in that it's easier and quicker to read. The instrument values are referred to a base and corrected for temperature and diurnal variation, and for the normal geographic variation of the Earth's magnetic field. The nuclear precision magnetometer is another continuous recording magnetic instrument that measures the Earth's total magnetic field by observing the free precession, progressive movement, frequency of the protons in a symbol of water. The interpretation of magnetic measurements is subject to the same fundamental drawbacks as noted for gravity measurements. The drawbacks are as follows. 1. Contrast and physical properties of the formations. Two, depths of origin and integrated contributions from many sources. 3. Changes in strength and direction of the Earth's field with location. 4. Cancelling effect related to proximity of opposite induced bosses at the boundaries of finite geological bodies. However, the method has proved valuable in exploration 
for magnetic mineral deposits in the determination of geological structural trends and in estimating the probable depths of the crystalline rock floor beneath sedimentary rock areas. Earth has its own magnetic field that varies from one location to another owing to the different structural materials of rocks and also the presence of solar charged particles received by Earth. A variation of magnetic field strength is recorded by a sensitive instrument called a magnetometer. Igneous non-porous rocks are found to be magnetic as compared to sedimentary rocks containing organic deposits. Thus, a magnetometric survey can also be used to locate oil deposits. Both the gravimetric and the magnetometric methods are done simultaneously to predict a reproducible subsurface structure. After the zone is confirmed by gravimetric and magnetometric surveys, a seismic survey is carried out for a clear image of the subsurface structure. Electromagnetic methods are based upon the concept that an alternating magnetic field causes an electrical current to flow in conducting material. Measurements are carried out by connecting a source of alternating current to a coil of wire, which acts as a source for a magnetic field similar to that which will be produced by a short magnet located on the axis of the coil. A receiving system consisting of a second coil connecting to a voltmeter is mounted so that there is free rotation about a horizontal axis. The receiving coil should be mounted so that rotation is on an axis perpendicular to that of the induced magnetic field. In this case, the induced voltage in the absence of a conductor will vary from zero when the coil plane is parallel to the plane of the applied field to a maximum when the coil plane is perpendicular to the plane of the applied field. However, if a conductor is present, the induced current in the conductor sets up a secondary magnetic field that distorted the primary field and gives a value that is not horizontal except directly over the conductor. By using an inclinometer to record the angle of the moving search coil when in the null position, the location of a conductor can be determined as a crossover inflection point on a profile across the body. Another variation of this method is to have both the receiver and the transmitting coils in the horizontal plane. In this arrangement, the voltage developed over non-conducting ground is a function of the construction of the coils that are usually moved across the ground with a constant separation. The presence of a conductor is indicated by changes in the voltage values from the normal values for this configuration. If you want to learn more about the magnetic survey in finding oil and gas, you could do so in my book Economic Study of Oil and Gas Exploration which is published on Amazon. Check it out at the link in the description. Please take a second to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to also hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching and goodbye.